The war wagon is a story of humility. Mine hit the ground first. Mine was taller. <laughs> the, the famous story, they're, work, they're in the bar in Mexico, and uh, they block the scene, and Dukes is at the bar, and Kirk walks through the door and walks up to him. So they get back from their trailers, and they holler action, and here comes Kirk walking up this ramp. <laughs> and he had the grip still. <laughs> and he's, he walks up, and he's right across from Duke. And Duke says, what the hell are you doing up there? <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. If you'd like to help us even more, join our Patreon posse and you'll get these shows ad free. All the great entertainment we offer with no commercials, plus some other goodies too. But right now, let's get on with the show. Welcome to A Word on Westerns. I am Rob Ward and you can hear the excitement in the room because we have the stunt coordinator from Lonesome Dove today. We may talk about it, but we're really gonna talk about Burt Lancaster because he was a young stuntman in that action-packed movie, Old Zana's Raid. I'm talking about Billy Burton. Give him a big hand. How's that for an intro? Nice. Perfect, okay. Billy and I went horseback riding the other day and the weather was spectacular. We uh, had a good time. We did. And uh, Griffith Park, lunch at the Viva. Couldn't be better than that. <laughs> well, we're gonna have lunch a little bit later on here at the Autry, but I wanna know about your experiences on Old Zana's raid with Burt Lancaster. Burt was actually a real pro, and around Aldrich, he, he didn't pull any shenanigans with anybody. You know, it was like Ford and Wayne, you know. Wayne was, hit his marks and said his dialogue, and that way, this way uh, Burt was around Aldrich, of course, and Aldrich ran a tough ship. He mm -hmm. was. He was the boss. You know. Well, he had made some wonderful westerns uh, with Burt Lancaster early. He did Apache, he did Vera Cruz, and Old Zana's Raid brought them back together toward the end of uh, their careers. And Old Zana's Raid was uh, just magnificent. I mean, Richard Jekyll and, and the stunt guys in that. Uh, Walter Scott, Jerry Gatlin, myself, uh, Larry Randalls, who's deceased, uh, Freddie Brookfield is deceased. Uh, of course, Tony. Mm -hmm. uh, he was there doubling Bert, and Bert was always scolding Tony because uh -huh. he knew what Tony was like. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Dean Smith actually had a and, part in that too. Actually, he did, and I actually ended up doubling Dean in that movie. Really? Yes. And the horse fall? Horse fall, yeah. Yeah, boy! Oh, boy, yeah! <laughs> That's pretty uh, hairy stuff there. Yeah, it was, uh, he had a fallen horse there and it didn't work and the mm -hmm. horse wouldn't go down and they were all frustrated so Aldrich and Bert said, Bert, get in the clothes. So <laughs> <laughs> I jumped in the clothes and I, I retired a, a uh, humane man on that show. He, uh, I was over there drilling holes in this horse's front feet and I, I put, rigged it all up. He said, what are you doing? I said, just watch. So they yelled the action, I had Patty Elder behind me. And that, we went running down that hill, and I pulled the trip on that sucker. He went in over it. <laughs> Whoa. They don't do much of that anymore, do they? Uh, no, it's a shame, because <laughs> I never hurt one yet. Uh-huh. Well, that's what Yak said. If you did them right, yeah. no horse got hurt. Never, never hurt him. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the humane guy went nuts. And so Bert and Aldrich said, dude, we're going to sue you and your organization. You're making it unhealthy and a bad place and you're ruining our film. That was the end of it. He was gone. He retired. He, he died enough. He'd never seen anything like that. I, I think he had. But. You know, Dick Farnsworth worked on that. Film yes, too. Richard Farnsworth. Yes, he was one of the troopers. It's, uh, it was quite an eclectic bunch of guys. What was it like after the day's shooting was over? We were all over the place. We were out in, in Nevada and everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, and then we were at the hotel in Vegas at the Tropicana. Mm -hmm. So, and then we were at the Rio Rico originally in Arizona, right out on the border. So it was quite a, a trek, but it was, uh, 
It was wild. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, it was worth it. The film looks fabulous. Bruce Davison has wonderful memories about working on that film, too. Yes, he was a pup at the time, and well, we all were. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure it was probably one of the best moments of his career. Well, he's had a lot of highs since yes, he then, has. too. But that was one of his first uh, big yeah. roles. He said he came in to meet with Aldrich, the director, and he says, you know, I just love your work. I love Sand Pebbles. And Aldridge says, well, that was Robert Wise. You're just stupid enough to play this part. <laughs> <laughs> so he got the role. <laughs> Where will he fight us? You don't mean to fight you no place, Lieutenant. He only means to kill you. Well, how did you get into the, the stunt business? How did you end up on Olzana's raid? Well, I'd been around since I came in late 65, working extra in Hollywood on all the Western TV shows. And I was a little skinny kid, so they were always had a spot for a little skinny kid that didn't weigh much, and they'd throw me around. And, and I ended up <laughs> doing a movie called Shakiest Gun in the West. Doubling you played Don, Doubling Don Knotts? Doubling Don Knotts. Wow. And play little roles. I don't see that, you know? Well, you, uh, I was a lot slimmer in those days. <laughs> That was before I had the furniture wreck. Oh. Chest well, fell right down in my drawers. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don Nuts, I mean, that was a remake of Pale Face, the Bob movie. Yes, Hope it was. Movie. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. Bob Steele was in it. Uh, uh, Terry, uh, Terry Wilson was in mm -hmm. it from, yeah, it was, it was quite, a, quite fun. And all the old time stunt guys mm -hmm. and the old Wranglers. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. The film that uh, I'm curious about, too, because it had Dean Martin, one of my favorites, uh, was uh, and Brian Keith, something big. You worked on that as well. Yes, but not your favorite movie, I'm sure. Well, it's it's certainly not. I think it's one of the few that I actually walked out on. But uh, <laughs> it's rare for a Western. But uh, Andy McLaughlin directed that, and you worked that movie. Uh, yes, he did. That was my second trip to with Andy to Mexico. First was with John Wayne, 1968. Undefeated. Undefeated. So I was happy to be back in Durango. I love Durango. And uh, I was sitting there on the set one day, or standing there actually with us, alongside the producer, and he said, he's ruining my movie. <laughs> and Andy, you know, he would, under budget, ahead of schedule, just shoot what's on the page, nothing comes, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, and this poor producer he's ruining my movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, Burt Lancaster uh, worked quite often with Kirk Douglas, and I know you worked with Kirk Douglas as well. I did. I did yeah. a movie with Kirk Douglas called Posse. To get what they want, they use the Posse. Five of the most ruthless killers ever trained in the name of the law. He was the director and producer. Uh, it was his company, Brian and Company, Paramount Pictures. And you had Bruce Dern in that, and Jim uh, Stacy. Alfa Bo Hopkins. Alfonso Rue, Lucas sure. Q. Mm -hmm. uh, good cast. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good movie. Yeah, it, it's a good movie. And, and I, I met, I interviewed for the movie and with him and Howard Pine. And then I ended up at Kirk's house at 707 Cannon Drive every day for like two months plotting this movie with him. I knew every shot, every angle. He didn't, but I did. Because we got on the set, and he didn't know which side of the camera to look, and he was the director, and I thought, oh boy, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so make a long story short, they said, you have to be in the posse. And that was myself and Bo and Luke. And so uh, you could be there all the time. Well, I was there all the time, because I doubled everybody. Go off your I horse. We have doubling Alfonso, I doubled Bruce, Kirk. So I mean, I was really in the deal. So, we're doing stills one day, and they got us all lined up on the hill, and Kirk's there in front, and we're looking at the stills after we get him back the next day, and he goes, I gotta watch you, you're looking too good. <laughs> <laughs> and it went downhill from there. Well, he got great performances out of people. I don't think Bruce has ever done a more charming bad guy than in that film. Usually, he's just too intense, but he, he's just wonderful in that movie. He was, yes he was. You know what I regret most? I was killing that sheriff out there in the street. Because, mister, that should have been you. I don't usually attend hangings. But in your case, I might make an exception. Kirk, he would be standing on the set, and he started doing to me what Kenny called, what Bert did to Kenny called. He started putting my back to camera and adjusting me around. Of course, he was the director. 
So, and I, I see him looking up at me because he hit me about right here, you know. And I keep seeing him look at me. And every day he'd come on the set and he'd be a little bit taller, a little bit taller, a little bit taller. All of a sudden I'm looking straight across at him. Went, okay, so we're on the train one day. We, we drove, rode around on a train with our horses and jumped them on and off. And so I'm laying there in the bunk and he's walking through the publicist and Dern and he said, yeah. she said, how tall are you, Kirk? And he says, well, I guess I'm six feet, two. <laughs> and I later I said, Kirk, you're not even six feet. <laughs> and Dern says, Billy, shut up. We'll tell you how tall you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, uh, that was a, an adventure, really. Bert Kennedy told a story about in War Wagon that he directed with Kirk and uh, Duke. Right. And there was a scene where they're, watching something and they are standing on this uh, little mound of, uh, of dirt and they'd, they'd break and they'd come back and do the scene again and Kirk's getting taller and taller each time. He's putting more dirt on his thing. And so Duke saw him doing that, so he started putting more dirt on his. <laughs> Mine hit the ground first. Mine was taller. The, the famous story, they're, working, they're in the bar in Mexico, and uh, they block the scene, and Duke's at the bar, and Kirk walks through the door, walks up to him. So they get back from their trailers, and they holler action, and here comes Kirk walking up this ramp. <laughs> and he had the grip still. <laughs> and he's, he walks up, and he's right across from Duke. And Duke says, what the hell are you doing up there? <laughs> <laughs> that was a true story. I wasn't there, but oh, yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, they yeah. worked well together. Uh, they did. So, John Wayne. Let's talk about John Wayne and Undefeated, too. I mean, what a thrill to have been in that film. It was. It was. Uh, it was bigger than life. And when I first got to Durango that night, we went to the Me Mexican courts. Combs been there a few times. And uh, that was where everybody stayed at the time, and Duke had his own little suite there that he stayed in. And I walked in there, and he had his tube off, and he's standing there holding court. And I walked in, and I went, oh my God, there's, that's my grandfather. He looked just like my grandfather. <laughs> but he was, again, a total pro on the set. We did the big fight there between the Confederates and, and the Cowboys, and Jim Burke, and the big football player that was played the wonderful part, who's now gone. I, uh, anyway, Merlin Olson. Uh, Merlin Olson, thank you. And so it was uh, a great treat, yes. Mm -hmm. And then we did the wild horse thing. We had 3,000 head of loose mm -hmm. horses, mm -hmm. which I tell people that today and they just shake their head. They can't even fathom it. I can't either. I'll never see it again. Mm -hmm. Nobody will see it. You know, you'll never see 3,000 horses, not including wranglers and stuntmen and Mexican cavalry. And, I mean, we had like. How did they gather all those? That's a lot of horses. They spent months and they did a hoof brand for each owner. And they might get five from one guy or two or 10 or 30. And they would hoof brand all these horses. Mm -hmm. And they weren't very big and they were awfully poor. And uh, we'd, we'd stampede them and take them a long time to get going and a long time to get stopped. And then one of them would fall down, and then they would just stack up on top of one another. Ooh. So when they yell cut, we'd go in there, and we'd pick them all up, and get them going again, and start over. Uh, well, Nina was a coordinator, and it was uh, 20 of us at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was uh, uh, all the old timers were there. Gary Combs was even there. <laughs> <laughs> He's even here today. Yes. He's been in more Western than anybody oh, alive cool. today, I believe. Let's take him to Mexico!